we're going to talk about um, SMS 101 um, from a public policy perspective, from a technology perspective, and an anthropology perspective. Because we all know, as we're in technology, not always the best technology wins or is implemented. Um, and SMS 101, the first SMS, was Merry Christmas back in 1992 on Vodafone. And SMS was designed to deliver voicemail notifications on the GSM network. And GSM was Group Systems Mobile, right? And it took off because it was SIM-based, not device-based. So most of the US carriers all sold TDMA, CDMA, IDEN devices. And GSM took off because it was SIM. So if you are a migrant worker in India or Africa, I could sell you that SIM for 10 cents and you could buy a used phone and so forth. So GSM took off. Another problem that the US had was there was no differentiator between a landline and a mobile number, right? Which caused users to not pass out their cell phone number, right? Because you're like, hey, I get only 500 minutes for Sprint back in the day. I'm not giving you my cell phone number and rack up my phone bill. And so another thing that was going on during the 2000s and so forth, where a lot of these countries like in Europe and Asia and so forth were selling off their government assets like Telstra and Swisscom and so forth. And in order for them to track investment, they had to have strong telecommunications governing bodies, which said, hey, the dominant government owned carrier is not going to eat your lunch. Um, and I will remember, I do remember France Telecom was charging seven euro cents per message as an intercarrier fee. Um, that, that was, I've been in this space for over 23 years. But, but they wanted to track foreign investment and it also affect pricing. So, um, and a lot of the world deployed different types of topologies, you know, from CDMA, TDMA, and, and even iMode in Japan. Those never really took off, and GSM became the dominant provider, and now CDMA and GSM are merged, right? But there was always an intercarrier fee around the globe, right? So carrier A says to carrier B, you have to pay me some money, right? And that was standard, standard protocol. Well, in, let me move this up a little bit so we're not getting the, the uh, say, okay. And this is kind of an interesting thing. So in November 18th, 2011, there was a lawsuit against the FCC saying, hey, carriers, you guys have all this short code traffic, regulations, and so forth, and, and, and you're charging people to receive text messages or to receive a call or to place a call, to receive a text, to place a text. You can't double dip. No way. And they won, right? So the carriers couldn't charge intercarrier fees, right? Well, the US carriers wanted a piece of the action, right? And implement, and, and this isn't person to person, they want to differentiate it between a person to person versus an application to person, right? So this isn't Susie selling, sending to Janet, this is an application that you guys are writing, that you guys are spending your time developing, and that your customers and your end users are gonna require to have SMS, right? Well, enter, the 10 digit long code or 10 DLC, which is the number of digits in the US phone system, uh, phone numbers. Well, they wanted it to be like that, smooth sailing, but it ended up being more like this, right? So what's happening in the space is completely disruptive. What is 10 DLC, right? And if you guys don't know what 10 DLC is and you're not registering your applications, bad stuff is gonna happen because you're traffic is going to get blocked, and the costs are going to go through the roof. So what is it? Well, the way they marketed this is, and I'm all for digital regulation, the pros are they promote it as less spam. So if we know who's using these applications, know who these end users are. So if you've written a veterinary software or you've written any type of software, you need to register with the campaign registry. And they did it to reduce number of spam, more transparency, so you know who's sending this through, and, and they promise higher throughputs, right? So the cons are the registration process is a pain in the butt, 
So let's say your vet office software, I don't know, or dentist office software, or a gym membership software. Well, you have to register all of your end users. And because they're so backed up, because this is a new, and, and the campaign registry is not FCC approved. It is carrier endorsed, right? We are promoting um, to get the FCC to take this, off, take this on, but there's long approval process before your customers are vetted. And, and then there's fees and fines in addition to that, where if you're gonna send a text message on AT&T, you might have been paying a quarter of a cent or a third of a cent, that costs are gonna triple. This is not including the cost to, to, um, to signal wire, it's the cost to the carriers. And then, it, and, and furthermore, you might get your messages blocked, right? We had one of our customers, Harvard University, they're pretty credible, they were getting blocked. So they're gonna block Harvard, they will block you. So, and, and imagine if you've written an application, right, hey, what if your child's school texted you, hey, Mr. Rosen, Mindy's running a high fever. We need someone to pick her up as soon as possible. But you didn't get it. And what if, you know, you're, at the op you're here right now, and maybe you've got a home health care provider that just sent you a text, and you didn't get this message because you're here. I had car trouble running an hour late. Can you make sure your mom takes her insulin before you leave for work? but you didn't get it. Now, how to stop this blocking? Well, one is the registration requirements, and these are changing all the time. This is one of the reasons why I'm working with Cloud Communications Alliance to get some federal intervention. So you have to register all of your end users. What is their legal name? What is their DBA? Let's say it's a dentist's office and he's doing the business all under his, his social security number, his EIN, his address, et cetera. And then they are verified against the IRS global database, right? And they're declined if they don't match, right? So make sure you do this, right? And, and then they're gonna look at your message content. What is the description of the campaign? Who are you texting? Did you have an opt-in message, right? and a sample of the message itself. Um, other message details include, attributes include phone numbers, URLs including the message, and which, um, which provider you're going with, okay? And this, is, this can be very expensive, right? So if you've got 1,000 customers or 10,000 customers, you're gonna have to pay a, a one-time fee of $4 for a brand fee and then a mandatory vetting fee. Now, and you can be charged multiple times if you didn't get passed, right? And then the ongoing fees are the campaign fee, you know, anywhere from 2 to $10 a month. So if, if you have a 1,000 dentist office, well, you could be paying $10,000 a month in campaign fees. And in addition to what you're paying SignalWire for your message delivery, you're going to have a carrier surcharge. And, it, and initially, in the next two to three months, they're going to double and triple that cost, and you might get blocked. So this is something, it may not, you, you may think, hey, I've written some code, it worked, it's fine, I'm golden, i got to worry about some other stuff, right? I get that, right? Because this is not your expertise, and you may not have the resources to do this, right? You're not a Google, you're not a Facebook where they have SMS divisions. But it adds up, not only from a time perspective, but from an actual monetary expensive. So if you've got 3,000 customers, you know, you could be paying $45,000 for their vetting fees and $12,000 for their, vet, their, their, their branding fee, and then the carrier surcharges. And if you have not written telecommunications costings into your application, what are you going to do? And, and, and this can be devastating for a small business. So let's say you're in some hair salon software and they send out 500 texts a month. Well, and half of them are blocked. And then half of appointments don't show up. Because Betty, who goes on Tuesday, didn't get the text and she forgot to go. But she doesn't know she didn't get the text because she's Betty, right? She doesn't work for the hair salon. And the hair salon person doesn't know that their, their message was blocked. So all of a sudden, the hair salon loses half their revenue. And then theoretically, the FCC chairman wrote um, to Senator Schatz 
for fine enforcement in March. So, hey, we want to be able to enforce this, although this is not FCC. We're hoping for some broader public policy. But, you know, in theory, they could get fined up to $10,000 per text message, right? And this stuff is just kicking off, guys. This regulation is just kicking off, right? So it started in October 2021, and they said, hey, we're doing this. And then March 2022, they said, hey, we're ready, so we're going to kick it off. And T-Mobile, which is the worst of the bunch, hey, we're going to charge you $50 for a campaign fee. And then they had a low volume campaign, or two bucks a month. And then they want you to submit a, a, a monthly report for sole proprietor for usage. And like, how many messages did T-Mobile, did you send to T-Mobile? Oh, and then September, T-Mobile was getting a lot of heat, said, oh, we're not doing that anymore, right? And then the sole proprietor brand fee increased to $2. Oh, wait, low com campaign fees just switched to $1.50. Now, you're supposed to write campaigns, you're supposed to write software to manage this? And then T-Mobile, and this is a brilliant one, will charge you $250 if you don't send a text message on their network every 60 days. Ridiculous, yeah. But this is the way it is now. And carriers are requiring more information from sole providers, even existing customers, or suspending accounts. And now they're, they're, they, in February, they just checked on a $15 betting fee, right? And, 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 they're, and now in June, they're going to start increasing uh, the, the delivery rates. So what is next? So you guys, the developers, right? You guys either, how do you want to handle this? Right? Well, some of you guys may not have written any telecommunications accounting software into your application, any error processing, you know, because it was so cheap. It's almost like, you know, back in the 70s when the oil crisis happened, right? I remember sitting in my parents' cars, right? We drove these huge cars. They probably got five miles a gallon. Everyone's like, hey, gas is cheap. Who cares? Well, all of a sudden, gas shot up. And you had to get in lines. And people started buying Hondas. I remember going to swim practice one day, and I see this girl getting a Honda. I'm like, what the hell's that? You know? <laughs> but things are going to change. So either you eat the cost, which some of you might be doing already, and factor in the cost of goods sold, or you can build their own, right? Say, hey, I'm going to take this on and manage this cost and appropriate it out. So this end user sent this many messages, and this is their cost. This user sent this many messages and so forth. Or I look for a managed service provider to say, hey, this is not my core business. I want to write vet software or home health care software or school software. Or I work with a managed service provider. So anybody have any questions about this? I know I went over a lot. The TCR, no? You guys all got anything? You'd have thought there would be some questions, wouldn't you, at this yeah. stage? Pardon? <coughs> Well, I'm, all right, th this kind of gives me hope. Um, there was a new uh, regulation that came out. It's called um, um, where if you buy a home health care product or like a home product for your house, a device, let's say a cybersecurity system or home uh, baby monitoring system, they're gonna, and the Biden administration just announced a Trustmark program. This is the end user stuff. I'm hopeful that a broader bill will come out with digital regulation that one takes this over so it's not as arduous and changing. And the problem with this is it's self-regulation, industry self-regulation. Well, that's like asking the oil companies to say, hey, do you pollute? Oh, no, we don't, right? You know, and, and, and that's a problem when you get industry self-regulation. So I'm hopeful for a broader context. You sounded like you're an Australian. Um, and and, and the, I, I love the Aussies, and I love the Aussies. We, st we started my company, so we've actually been in text messaging 
for over 23 years, and we started in Australia. And the Aussie approach is always they look at Europe, they look at America, and like, oh, they screwed it up, we'll go this way. They screwed it up, we'll go this way. And it's very pragmatic, so I, I'm hopeful. And the, the Australian government just allocated $10 million to allocate to something like this. Singapore has something similar to this. Um, in those markets where there's GSM only, you can specify the message header, which is like you could put an alpha characters where that message is from. In a mixed market like the US or any in the Americas, where you still have some CDMA and some other technologies, uh, you can't do that. And they're, they're requiring any of those where you've got a, a message header to uh, like, you know, submit, you know, um, passports and so verify your identification. So we're definitely seeing movement all over the globe around the campaign registry, similar type of systems. Um, I'm hopeful that um, when we go to Washington to educate them on this, that the FCC takes this over and it's a streamlined process and more consistent. Um, so. I answered that just now, but um, I was gonna say, do you see it be controlled by the cartels in the future or by the government instead? Because it seems a bit counterintuitive, as you said, it's like the oil companies saying, let's control emissions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm hopeful. I mean, but 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 with this with this uh, Trustmark program, they did that with the FCC under a separate unit, which I'm hopeful. And because you look at AI and you look at um, you know deep fakes and and since they regulated SMS as a digital service, we literally could sue the FCC to say, hey, my data is being discriminated against, and Facebook and Twitter isn't. Hmm. Why, right? So I'm hopeful for a broader bill um, that includes more than just text messaging, um, but we'll see, you know? I mean, uh, you, know, you know, the US has a very strong sense of anti-regulation, anti-government telling them what to do, but that's one of the reasons why the US was behind Africa for a decade with wireless, because you know, they let you know, the carriers put whatever they wanted to, and then we had this hodgepodge of, of, of technology. Okay, another one f from Europe this time. It, it's <laughs> wonderful being a European, seeing what a mess the US is in again. Um, what effect do you think um, the shift of traffic from to traditional SMS onto alternative <laughs> systems like, like WhatsApp and, mm. uh, and Apple, Apple messaging, for example? Yep. Um, good question. Um, well, there's very specific, if you look at the WhatsApp data on why and, and uh, where are their high penetration rates, there's a couple characteristics. One is they've got unreliable delivery, right? W uh, unreliable delivery in a certain country where your SMS don't always go through. In that case, like Brazil, right? So the Brazilians adopted the US topology. They had IDEN, they had TDMA, they had CDMA, they had GSM, this whole mix of stuff, right? Um, or you have high message costs, like Germany is another market, right? Where a, a WhatsApp is a high penetration rate. Or another market, another characteristic is authoritarian regimes, like Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is actually uh, WhatsApp's number one market with phone penetration rates. Um, and it's really because they're, they're, you know, they're like, oh, we don't like what you guys are saying. We'll just shut it off. Turn the off switch, guys. And they do. So, but the problem with OTT over the top messaging is you don't know the characteristics of who those are, right? SMS is still the most ubiquitous form of communication known to mankind, right? I could send a text message to three, theoretically eight billion devices. We don't even have eight billion PCs or eight billion smartphones. And so um, it's still, I am seeing more, you know, if you have a closed group, let's say you're an accounting software company and everyone uses like zero, right, as an example. Um, they might push their users to do Google Authenticator or Microsoft Authenticator, right, to do that. Um, but that's a closed group. But if you're dealing with the public and you don't know what they're on, some traffic may move to short codes. Um, so we'll see. I mean, yeah, I mean, if the carriers screw this up, you know, they could screw up, you know, the gifted horse. You know, they could kill the golden goose, if you will. So we'll see. But I think we'll see some intelligent regulation out of the EU.
Thank you, James. Go ahead, Joe. Do you see a movement on the P2P front, or, you know, moving more to an individual texting, getting away from this A2P, and reducing those costs? Well, P2P, it's, 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 it's um, if you're using a VoIP number, which means you'd actually have to use a SIM-based solution. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'll tell you funny. So we've been in this business for 23 years. We were in it before they actually had uh, the carriers actually opened up their SMSCs. And when we started, we had basically, uh, we, had, we had a bunch of Nokia 5110s that acted as, as modems <laughs> delivering the messages. And we still do in certain markets, right? Because, you know, but you can't scale, right? You can send one or two messages, but there's only so many text messages. And if you send a lot on that device, the carrier's like, hey, you just sent 50,000. Or what was, it was, it was um, there was a lawsuit against T-Mobile and these two friends, they were actually, they try to send like, I don't know, a million messages in a month. They said, well, it's unlimited. And then they got like a $9,000 phone bill or something. And they're like, screw this, we're unlimited text. And we just did it, whatever. But I, I it won't work from a technology perspective for a scale. You could probably get by with it if you're not sending a lot of volume. Thank you for that question, Joe. And thank you, Tom. Let's give Tom a very big clue. Round of applause. Thanks. <laughs>